Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Aline Marie Fay is a first-time author. In her book, The Fragments of a Broken Life, she shares a story very close to her heart. Based on her true story, she narrates a heart-wrenching tale of how an isolated, trusting little girl named Lena struggled, faced, and accepted the sexual abuse and molestation done to her to protect her loved ones. Hoping her story will help bring healing to the struggling victims throughout the journey to becoming victorious overcomers. Elaine considers herself an ordinary Christian woman with a mission to advocate against childhood sexual abuse. She is the author of Fragments of a Broken Life. And Elaine May Fay, Marie Fay joins us on This Week in America. Elaine, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you, and I'm glad to be with you, too. I want to mention right in the beginning, and we'll give you all the information on the book throughout the interview, that uh, all of the royalties from the book you were donating to an organization called TALK, T-A-L-L-K. Give us a little bit of background on the very important work that they're doing. Uh, TALK is a, a, a nonprofit organization uh, they spend a lot of time teaching awareness and prevention of childhood sexual abuse. Uh, they have a daily uh, thing they call tips uh, that they post uh, so that people can learn about pedophiles and also uh, about signs to look for. Uh, in, in case there's a child in their home or a neighbor or just a relative, uh, so that they'll, they'll start paying attention to those things and hopefully catch, uh, uh, catch it before it goes too far and get help for the child. And you'll find all the information on talk at uh, Aline's website, the Fragments of a Broken Life dot website. That's the uh, the website information. I'll give it to you during the program, and you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And you mentioned on your website a talk statistic, and, and they're alarming statistics that you have there. The single biggest barrier to resolving the childhood sexual abuse epidemic is silence, and we'll talk about that. During the course of the program, uh, you silenced the role it played in, in, in your life. And you've got statistics there. One in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused before the age of 18. Those are really alarming and shocking numbers, aren't they? They really are. Um, and and uh, to go along with that, I, I have to say uh, the sadness uh, for me is... Uh, uh, the no-talk rule that goes along with that. Uh, children are frightened to tell, uh, and, and a lot of times they don't even know how to explain what's happening to them. Um, but the, the statistics are rampant. We have an epidemic uh, of, of child sexual abuse. It's, it's just horrendous. Uh, it affects children emotionally uh, and physically and uh, silence. They're living in a world of silence. And, uh, and we, get, we feel the, the impact that had on your life as we are reading the book, The Fragments of a Broken Life. Let's talk a little bit about, well, and one more on this statistic, and then we'll get, we'll get into how it applied to, to your life. 30, 40% will be abused by a family member. We think of some stranger that uh, pops up in the neighborhood and, and, and disappears. In many, many cases, it's a family member or someone that, the, that they know. Exactly. Um, uh, actually, there's a very minor number of people you don't know. Uh, pedophiles... Uh, they target those they can get close to, and they're uh, they're expert at uh, concealing what they do. And the reason that that they are um, so readily available is because they have made themselves so trusting in a family environment. And uh, the way that they are able to keep things secret is. Uh, a threat to the child. Uh, 
uh, in my case, if you're not good to me, I'll send your brothers back to an orphanage. Yeah, and in your book, we understand the, the early years, what you went through in the in and out of, of or, orphanages multiple times. You're, I think, at the nine years old, when you have the, the first experience, you're with a, a family, you're with a family apartment, they share a bathroom with, with other apartments, and you've got a family member that, that follows you into the bathroom. Uh, talk about it, nine years old, when something like this happens, you're scared to death, aren't you? And you're told, and you mentioned the, the no talk rule, you're told as you were leaving the room, basically shut up, don't say this, don't talk about this to, to anybody. What, how difficult is that to, to carry that? <laughs> um, the best way I can describe that is if people would go online and just pull up pictures of uh, images, you know, go through for the images of childhood sexual abuse, you would find a, a, there's a specific picture I have in mind that you would find a child's face and their eyes are in such great fear and these many hands over their mouth and nose. And that's what you feel like. You're suffocating. You, 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 you can't speak. You can't breathe. Uh, you internalize everything. And, uh, so this is these are people that that the children know, and all of a sudden, you who do you trust, uh, and who do you tell, and uh, and and how do you tell, and so you become very silent, and that no talk rule applies to your life, and it sticks with you. And you have the believability factor as well. Should you decide to tell someone whether or not they are going to believe you at nine years old, you've got a vivid imagination, it's probably difficult to get the point across to, to someone. The second time this occurred, and let's jump up to, uh, I think you're about a month before your, your 12th birthday, uh, yeah. with, with your stepfather. And again, there's this fear what can you do? Who can you say, talk to? In fact, you tried to talk to in the military at the time, and you tried to, to, to bring it up to others. And uh, there was a wall up, wasn't there? They weren't going to believe what you were saying. Oh, absolutely. When I went to the NCO on post, it was right after I discovered in our sex education in school, uh, oh, my God, what's going on with me? I can get pregnant. And so I did. I, I reached out to the NCO officer, and he literally bashed me with horrid, horrid, hateful words. And how dare you? And and you should be ashamed of yourself bringing bringing reproach against this wonderful man who took you and your brothers out of an orphanage, giving you a home. Blah 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 blah. You would do well not to spread this any further. Yeah, and you were called ungrateful and a a dirty little girl, uh, Elaine Murray. Yeah. yeah, on top of everything, you're trying to do what's right and to to expose this, and suddenly you are once again the victim as you were being called all of the all these terrible things. Elaine Marie Fay, and that's A L I N E Marie, and Fay is F E Y. Our guest on the program, author of the book The Fragments of a Broken Life. The website is the Fragments of a Broken Life dot website. You can link on directly by going to our website. This Week in America.us, information on the book is available at the website. Once again, all of the royalties going to talk to work about uh, talking about uh, abuse to liberate kids. They're an organization that's really done so much to, uh, uh, to further this cause. It, it's an excellent cause, and all of the royalties from the book are, are, are going there. Let's talk about what happened in, in the years after that. This was a family member. It was a, a stepfather. Uh, talk about the, the pregnancies and making a decision with uh, with one daughter that uh, you lovingly raised. Right. Uh, at the age of 14, I became pregnant after going to this CO. And um, uh, I tried to hit, hide the fact that I was pregnant, trying to figure out what to do. And uh, he discovered I was pregnant. He was a medic in the Army. And he performed an abortion on me in the basement. Uh, there was it was a partial abor- abortion in that it didn't happen immediately, and I was deathly sick. Um, 
Uh, so uh, fast forwarding uh, the abortion, uh, the loss of the baby takes place. Uh, days after, after being really, really sick, days after, uh, mother takes me to the uh, hospital and um, uh, I didn't hear what the words were because they were outside the exam room, uh, but there was some raising of voices and so on. And, and um, so uh, I knew the doctor was angry and I knew that I knew that he knew what had happened. And, uh, but nothing was said in my presence. And so um, uh, it was dismissed. And, uh, um, um, I, well... <laughs> yeah, it's a powerful oh, yeah. story that you tell, and it's so, uh, I think, eye-opening for many of us as we read the book. And the book is called The Fragments of a Broken Life. Uh, information available at our website. You can look on directly at thisweekinamerica.us. And Eileen's website is the Fragments of a Broken Life website. Uh, the daughter we talked about is Christina, and just to, to jump ahead, you found out later that uh, that she was victimized as well. In when you look back at it, you talk about the, the look on her face and history repeating itself, and and we find out how the system works. After you've been a victim, you're often victimized again as you try to work through the system, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, after the abortion, uh, I became pregnant again, and this time I, I'm fighting to keep this child, and, and uh, uh, I, I, uh, I did uh, avoid three attempts of abortion, and uh, so I'm raising this precious child of mine, and uh, um, she ends up being molested by my first husband, and I... I really, I, I almost had a nervous breakdown over that, in that I couldn't understand how I couldn't have known the signs. I, of all people, should have known. And yet this, this comes through anyway. And, and um, so we went through a lot of trauma with that. And even my precious daughter um, uh, going through, uh, I'm not worthy, uh, wanting to get herself taken away from me to protect me. Um, uh, she had heard from some, some well-meaning people, oh, the only place a person should have an abortion is if they're raped because that child would always remind their mother of that. And so my daughter heard that, and she started acting up, went from a, a straight-A student to an F student and various acting up. And, and uh, long story short, she discovered from some wonderful person there, oh, no, 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 darling, if that's what's wrong with you, we're going to fix that right away. And so she and I mended, and, and uh, God really worked in her life. And, and uh, so that was that. And, and it's amazing. Um, the trickery, these pedophiles are so tricker, trickered. They're just off, awful people. Uh, how they get around the family members uh, and do the things they do to these precious children. It's ungodly. It's just horrible. And you will find all of that. It unfolds in the book, The Fragments of a Broken Life. It's interesting that you talk about your relationships and how they, uh, with the male gender, the, the, the difficulty, and often you would have flashbacks and you would look into the face of, uh, uh, of a husband or, or a boyfriend at the time and, and see, see the person, the perpetrator, that created all of these problems in the beginning. It really is something that stays with you, it doesn't. It? It's, it, yeah. it never goes away. No, it never goes away. You, uh, you do, uh, in my case, with the help of God, you, you learn. Uh, and uh, the, the major thing for me was that I got my voice, and, uh, and, and God directed me to write. And, uh, and you know, um, but by the grace of God, uh, I am able to help others. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, with my every breath, I tell people, until the last breath, I'm going to advocate and advocate and advocate. And so that's that's my mission, and and um, uh, that that's <laughs> that's the bottom line for me. You know, uh, uh, silence is not golden. Silence is a destroyer. 
And you mentioned that you feel it's it's God's will that you that you write the book, and you you mentioned that in the book of Fragments of a Broken Life. What uh, July of ninety that you really felt uh, that that God was inspiring you to to write your life story. How difficult yeah. difficult was it once you made that decision that I really need to do this? I mean, you're reliving in vivid detail uh, in your mind and for everybody to read what what you went through. How difficult was that for you to go back and to, to relive all of these experiences? Oh, my. Well, I actually wrote it twice. The first time I wrote, it was very, very bitter. Uh, I wrote in the third person. <laughs> I couldn't, uh, yes. I didn't even allow myself to write me, you know, she, she, she. And uh, and it was all of the ugly. It was it was all of it, just as black and white as it could be. And uh, and uh, uh, and the good Lord had even given me the title, "The Fragments of a Broken Life." And and uh, but He used it to mend me. And um, and when I finished it, I read all the way through it, and I was slobberingly crying. And and I I just and I said, but God, I was just a little girl, you know, yes. and and um, so when I finished, I had to lay it down for a while, and and uh, the, another time came that it was uh, prophesied over me, take up pad and pen, and uh, I said I would give you the fragments, Lord, if I even knew where they were, where are they? And so when I did write again. God showed me in a miraculous, beautiful way where he had actually been there with me all the way. And you talk about and that so, so eloquently okay. in the book, the, the Fragments of a Broken Life, and you, you say that as a child accepting Jesus as your Savior was easy, as an adult learning to trust him as Lord of your life was, was not so simple. How long did it take you to realize <laughs> The help is there, and it's for me. The, oh, he just didn't give up on me. He just he just stayed with me. Well, and you said he didn't give up, and you gave up on yourself a number of times, but he did not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I even attempted suicide. I did, and and uh, um, and God put the right people in my path at the right time, and and He showed me all of that in that second writing. It's a, it was like, remember this, remember this, remember this, and, oh, God, yes, I do, yes, I do, write it, write it. And, uh, and that's, that's the reason this book can help others. Um, the book is The Fragments of a Broken Life. A few minutes left in the program. You do talk at the end about bitterness being a hideous thing, and as I'm reading um, the book, how do, you, how do you get over that? Well... You have to first open, and and the way that you open is by letting God show you where He was, and that He is still here. Um, uh, I I think that the major, major, major key to it all uh, comes at uh, comes at a a point where you're ready to be to let God in, to really let him in. And he asked me to forgive. And again, I cried out, but God, I was just a little girl. Nine years old. And, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but God, God showed me Jesus. Uh, in one of the orphanages, there were the pictures, the, the, the Catholic faith call it the Stations of the Cross. And I'm a, uh, in, I call it interdenominational. I, I don't belong to any particular faith. Uh, but, but in, the, in the, the one orphanage, there were these beautiful pictures on the wall of the Stations of the Cross. And I, as a child, I would walk by them and touch them and look in them and imagine myself there. And I would call out to Jesus, and, and I didn't want him to continue going so far from me. And uh, uh, that stayed with me and still is there. I have a, a poem I wrote that called The Paintings on the Wall. And, um, and he drew me. He drew me. He drew me forever in my life. He drew me. And um, 
and, and, and that's why I have the mission, because of that drawing me to him. And with and, this... Uh, yeah, and with this mission, you've got the book, and if you go to the website, and I will give you the information on the website here in just a second, but if you go to the website, oh, yeah. you're available to speak to various organizations, to various church groups. What's this been like, yeah. actually, with the book and being able to help people and going into churches and talking about something that's really been a, a, a silent, we described it, I think, as a silent epidemic that's, that's really much greater numbers than probably most of us uh, have any idea happens. You know, if if you can visualize one out of four girls and one out of six boys, what I like to do when I go into a, a, a place to speak is I ask them to start at the back and come forward and count off one, two, three, four, and the fourth person stand up for the girls, and then do the same thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, for the guys. And, and do that again, and and let them look around and tell them, do you see these numbers? This is how many are right here in this building of these men and women that were children. And that is so powerful, to I'm sure, for the kids to visually see this. And as you're talking to the kids, I'm sure you are giving them this information that this uh, the no-talk rule that really doesn't apply. You really need to tell somebody, don't you? Yes, yes. It, I, I'm a, uh, I am so motivated by it that there's nothing in me that can stop. Well, I can sense Absolutely. the passion, yeah, and the book is going to touch so many people. Once again, it's called The Fragments of a Broken Life. The author is Aline Marie Fay. That's A-L-I-N-E. Fay is F-E-Y. The book is called The Fragments of a Broken Life. The website is very simple. It is the Fragments of a Broken Life dot website. Book is available at uh, Book Venture, at Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Direct information by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. A link directly to uh, to Aline's website. Get information there on the book as well as information on her. And if you have an organization that you would like to have uh, uh, her come speak to. Great information on the website. Once again, all of the uh, royalties are being donated to Talk, T-A-A-L-K, an organization dedicated to breaking the silence that surrounds child sexual abuse. Elaine, it's been uh, great having you with us on the program. So much information. You're going to touch so many people. Thank you for being with us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Once again, the website is the Fragments of a Broken Life dot website. You can find all that information, of course, and link on directly by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. Stay tuned. We're coming right back after these messages.